we continue our reporting today on a hidden danger at one of Puerto Rico's top tourist destinations. Yesterday, we told you about tragic consequences when emergency medical care never arrived in response to recent drownings on the island of Culebra. Today, we hear from two people who did try to help when a man was in urgent need. David Begno has the story, and there is a warning that some of the video you're about to see may be disturbing. Finally, the ambulance came. The person I remember asking, somebody asked if they, uh, if they know how to do CPR, and I remember him asking, what's CPR? So at that time, I kind of lost my uh, hope. Sharuja Paramanathan says she was holding out hope that once they got into the ambulance, there would at least be some type of life-saving equipment, like a defibrillator, that could help to resuscitate her husband. It's empty. It's empty. They come with the ambulance. It's completely empty. There's no machine, nothing, nothing in there. Her husband was taken to Calabra's only clinic, and that is where he was pronounced dead. I'm sure if it happened in Toronto, he'll be alive right now. That's what I know right now. If they would have done more, he would be alive. For sure. For sure. I'm from Sri Lanka, and I've been to, to, in, in the ambulance in Sri Lanka, and it's a third world country, and they have much better facility than this. Much, much better facility. Emily Jimenez, a certified medical assistant, and Emily Bocut, a registered nurse, were there with their young families on vacation. They were two of the Good Samaritans on the beach that day when the emergency happened. They didn't know each other before this, and they have not seen Sharuja since then. What is it like for the two of you just listening to her? It's heartbreaking. I've had every feeling that you can imagine, from anger to frustration to sadness. There's people that live there. What kind of care are they getting? I told the same Emily when I left that hospital. I told them, like, um, this got to change. I mean, what happened to us shouldn't happen to anybody else. Do you remember saying at some point, where the heck is the ambulance? Yes, multiple times. Yep. I was the one doing compressions when they showed up. Mm -hmm. And I just looked up and I said, hey, we're all exhausted. Is there any way you guys could take over for us or help us? What did they say? They said they no. They said, no, we don't do them out here. So what were they doing? Standing around just watching y'all? Yep, standing around. Emily Jimenez recorded this video. Ambulance takes over 30 minutes. Then they come with no equipment. They refuse to give him CPR. There is one resident living on Culebra who says he is a certified paramedic. He even posted on his Facebook page about passing the test. His name is David Perez. In fact, he was one of the first responders to arrive on the beach that day when Good Samaritans were trying to revive Sharuja's husband. All right, so you and another person responded to the scene. Yes, I, and a driver, only driver. And so what were you there to do? Assist the chauffeur. Assist the chauffeur. Yes. Como se dice, my job prescription is a technician. The emergency management, no ENT, no paramedic, so no, nothing to help the salud. I hear you, but I'm just struggling, David, because you are a paramedic. So I understand you're not working for the municipality as a paramedic, but when this happened, you were trained as a paramedic. So why didn't you offer to help with the CPR or with anything? El CPR, ellos lo estaban haciendo. He claims that once they got into the ambulance, he performed CPR. Sharuja told us that never happened. In my experience in the States, paramedics just always jump in, right? They always just jump in and take over. What did he say? He said, that that's, he said that that's in the United States. It's sí. not in Puerto Rico. But, yeah. And I think, and I don't... Sometimes there's not even a support from the police. There's not even support from the police, and I appreciate the candor, but it, it's also kind of sad. I would like to see the people that were responsible to assist but chose not to be held accountable. Mm. I would like to see the government, you know, use the funds that they have and utilize them to make an island safe. 
And so what did the two of you think walking away? I assumed they were going to give care, but I felt just sick about it all. But that man did not get the justice of care that he needed. Sick why? There's so many things that, just basic things that could have given him a better outcome. And we didn't have any of that. We weren't able to give him the best care we could have. Would you go back? I don't think so. I feel like it's too big of a risk, especially with my family. Mm. At this point, there has to be something done. Now, five days after we left Culebra, a 58-year-old man died after drowning on Flamingo Beach. Mayor's office tells us they have since hired a lifeguard who began working on May 14th and that there have been no reported drownings since that man was hired. The Puerto Rico Public Safety Department that oversees all of Puerto Rico's islands told us in a statement that in Culebra there are two municipal paramedics, one of them certified, which contradicts our report. So we went back to the mayor's office to ask, did you hire someone to work as a paramedic since we were last there and spoke to you? Do you know what the mayor's spokesperson told us? They haven't hired any paramedics. No one yet, except that lifeguard.